Chapter 12 Emergency Care Emergencies always strike suddenly, without warning. One moment everything is fine, the next, someone is involved in a serious accident. Victims include all ages, from tiny children to elderly folk. Cuts, bruises, lacerations, fractures, and fainting spells are common amid all the bustling activity of life. Everyday people fall from broken ladders, weakened chairs, and makeshift ways of climbing up to fix something. Other trip over rough objects or fall downstairs. Some injuries are slight, others are serious and need immediate care. Are you prepared to give the kind of care they need? Accidents are likely to occur at any time, and one of your loved ones may be involved. What you do now, or fail to do, may make a great deal of difference between a quick recovery or a prolonged illness, perhaps even death. First Aid First aid is the kind of treatment you give while waiting for the doctor to come. It is never intended to replace qualified professional care. First aid is only designed to make the victim comfortable until help arrives. By carrying out the following simple steps, you will be able to calm the victim's fears and reduce any chance of further injury. If he is bleeding, you must first try to stop any further loss of blood. If there is a broken bone, try to immobilize the area and put the patient at rest. If he is having a convulsion, protect him from injuring himself. If he has swallowed poison, do your best to remove the poison, or else neutralize it without delay. These are the general principles of first aid. Any normally intelligent person can carry them out. All it takes is the ability to make definite decisions and the courage to follow them through. Any lack of decision now may be fatal. 108 Emergency Care Handling an Injured Person 1. Take charge of the situation at once. Send someone to notify the doctor, telling him exactly where the victim will be found. 2. See how badly the victim's is hurt. Is he breathing regularly? Is he losing blood? If so, wear. Cut or rip the clothing from the injured part, putting pressure over the bleeding points as soon as possible. Be careful not to injure any area where there are broken bones. Always look carefully for signs of burns, or shock. 3. Keep the victim lying down, his head level with the chest. Don't let him sit up. Calm his fears and keep him comfortable. 4. Avoid all unnecessary movement, especially if there is any possibility of a fracture of the spine. Many an injury has been made far worse because well-meaning people tried to carry a victim to a car. 5. Keep yourself calm. Do what must be done as promptly as possible. Avoid all confusion. 3. Signs of serious injury. Watch for these three important signs. 1. Serious bleeding. If the blood is dark in color and flows continually, it means a large vein has been cut. Pressure over the laceration will usually control the bleeding. If the blood comes in spurts and is bright red, an artery is involved. Try pressing constantly over the cut. If this fails to stop the bleeding, you may have to apply a tourniquet. Details of how to do this are given on page 111. Lacerations on the face or scalp can usually be controlled by heavy pressure over the injured area. 2. Stoppage of breathing. Watch the patient's chest for movements of breathing. If no movements are seen, you must begin artificial respiration at once. The best method is mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing. Take a long breath, apply your lips directly to his, and gently blow into his mouth, holding his nostrils while you do this. Continue to blow air into his lungs, about 10 to 12 times each minute. You may use a tube for this purpose, holding the lips tightly around the tube. Remember, children require less air than adults. 3. Poisoning Note carefully the condition of the victim's lips and mouth. See if there are burns or other signs of discoloration present. If he is frothing at the lips and turning blue, he may be having shock and its treatment 109. An epileptic attack. This is not due to poisoning. Call the doctor at once. Meanwhile, try to find out what medicines the individual has been using. 
Aspirin poisoning is common in young children today. PEOPLE who are depressed sometimes take an overdose of sleeping tablets. These usually bring on a deep sleep from which the patient cannot be aroused. The victim should be taken at once to a hospital emergency room to have the poison pumped out of his stomach. Shock Shock is an extremely serious condition, due to sudden failure of blood circulation. It is seen in such conditions as sudden heart attacks and strokes. It also frequently follows some serious injury, such as a burn, fracture, or a deeply penetrating wound of the chest or abdomen. Signs of shock The skin becomes pale, cold, and clammy. The eyes are dull and listless. The pulse is weak and rapid, and the victim may feel nauseated and begin to vomit. Breathing becomes irregular and shallow. Unless this is quickly relieved, he may lapse into complete unconsciousness and die. Shock is always easier to prevent than cure. The trouble is usually due to insufficient blood to meet the needs of the brain and heart. How to prevent shock? 1. Keep the victim quiet and lying down. Make him as comfortable as you can. 2. Keep him warm. If he is lying on a cold or wet surface, try to work a blanket or some newspapers under him. Disturb him as little as possible. Cover him to keep him warm. Use anything that may be handy, even newspapers, for this purpose. If he feels cold, place a warm water bottle at his feet. Take care not to burn him. 3. Liquids Never give any liquid to an unconscious person. If he is conscious and the doctor is likely to be delayed, give him a warm drink if he requests it. Tea, coffee, or warm milk may be used. Give only a teaspoonful at a time and never more than cup unless he feels very thirsty. If he has an abdominal injury, do not give him anything by mouth. For encouragement. Shock arises directly from the injury. Fear will make it much worse. Do no let the victim see his injuries. This may only increase his fear and bring on a state of severe shock. Assure. 110 Emergency Care. Caring for wounds 111. Him that he is safe and that no harm will come to him if he lies quietly while waiting for the doctor. His best chance for making a quick recovery is to rest calmly until help arrives. Bleeding wounds. If bleeding is excessive, it must be brought under control as soon as possible. On the other hand, if the bleeding is only slight, it may be well to let the wound bleed a little to help wash out any germs that may be present. Be sure to remove all the nearby clothing so you can see clearly what to do. Take away any dirt or other material that may be touching the wound. Then apply a thick pad of sterile gauze or a freshly ironed handkerchief over the wound, bandaging this firmly in place. For small wounds, such as cuts and scratches, just clean the area thoroughly with soap and warm water. Then apply some suitable disinfectant, such as Cetflon or Mercurochrome. Cover this with a sterile gauze dressing, and bandage carefully. Applying a tourniquet. A tourniquet is a tight band that is placed around an arm or leg to control heavy bleeding. It should never be used unless there is no other way of controlling the bleeding. This is how it is done, wind a flat band twice around the leg or arm, just above the wound. A necktie, stocking, or large handkerchief may be used for this purpose. Tie a single knot, then hold a small stick on top of the knot, and tie two more knots. Gently twist the stick until the band is tight enough to stop the flow of blood. Do not twist beyond this point. Leave the tourniquet in place until the doctor comes. But if this is likely to be more than half an hour, loosen the tourniquet every 20 minutes for a few seconds, then tighten it again. Be sure to Write down the exact time when the tourniquet was applied. Special Types of Wounds There are four main types of wounds, as shown in the picture. Each requires a different type of treatment. One abrasions are caused by scraping the skin, as may occur from falling on a street. These brush burn injuries are always badly. 112 Emergency Care Types of Wounds 113 Infected Gently wash the area with soap and warm water, 
removing all the dirt on the surface. Cover the area with a sterile dressing and bandage carefully. This will help to relieve both pain and shock. Two incised wounds are deep cuts, such as are made with a knife, broken glass, or razor blade. These wounds always bleed freely because many blood vessels in the skin have been cut. They are less likely to be infected. Bleeding helps to wash out germs. However, a few stitches may be needed to control the bleeding. Bandage the area firmly and take the patient to a doctor or to a hospital emergency room as soon as possible. Three lacerations are torn wounds made by blunt instruments, or by explosions, or falls against sharp edges. They are particularly dangerous because dirt and germs are often ground into the wound. Much of the normal tissue is more danger of infection. Bleeding is less severe but there is more danger of infection. Such injuries are best cared for in a hospital emergency room, where the damaged tissues can be safely cut away under suitable anesthesia and the wound thoroughly cleansed and repaired. Four puncture wounds and stabs are caused by narrow, pointed instruments, such as needles, nails, thorns, ice picks, scissor blades, bullets, and similar objects. Puncture wounds do not bleed freely, unless a large blood vessel has been entered. Germs frequently lodge in this type of wound, and painful abscesses may form. Cleanse the wound as much as possible and apply rubbing alcohol over the surrounding area. Then apply a firm pressure bandage and take the patient to the doctor. Tetanus or lockjaw. All wounds are easily infected, the greatest danger being from tetanus. These germs are found in all types of animal manure. Street dirt is always contaminated with tetanus germs. So is the soil around fields, gardens, and rural areas. For this reason, everyone, young and old, should be fully protected against tetanus. The best way to protect yourself is to take a series of tetanus toxoid injections before any injury ever occurs. Prevention is always better than cure. Even today, very few patients ever recover once tetanus has fully developed. Many young babies are now given special combination shots which include protection against diphtheria, pertussis, whooping cough, tetanus, or lockjaw, and polio. This inject. 114 Emergency Care. Injection 115. Shin, known as DPT polio, is given three doses at monthly intervals. The first injection is given when the child is two months old. After this first series, another tetanus toxoid injection should be given every three years until the child is 12 years of age. Tetanus toxoid injections should be given to adults at least every five years, more often if they travel a lot of work with animals. These tetanus toxoid injections produce an active immunity to the disease. All who travel in buses or cars or trains are subject to possible injury. The more protected the individual is against tetanus, the safer he will be. If an injured patient has never had tetanus toxoid injections, the doctor may decide to use tetanus antitoxin, which is a more serious type of injection, especially if a person is allergic to horse serum. The wise person will protect himself against tetanus now. Before he is injured. Preventing wound infection. Whenever the skin is broken there is always the possibility of infection. Be careful not to touch the wound with the tips of the fingers, or with anything else that may be carrying germs. If the wound looks fairly clean and bleeding has stopped, cover the area with a sterile dressing and bandage it firmly in place. Usually it is best to leave the wound alone until the doctor has had time to examine it thoroughly. If the wound is contaminated with dirt, and the doctor is not likely to see it for several hours, carefully wash the whole area with soap and warm water. Remove all surface dirt, running the soapy water into the deeper parts of the wound. Then apply the dressing over the wound and bandage it firmly in place. A little bleeding is often beneficial in the healing. Do not lift the dressing off every few minutes to see what is happening. You may not be giving the blood time enough to clot. Above all, keep yourself calm. Do what must be done without becoming excited. Remember, Soap and water are more valuable than all the antiseptics you may want to apply. Clean the wound first, 
then apply the antiseptic solution if you wish. Finally, place a dressing and bandage if firmly in place. In any serious injury, be sure to seek qualified medical help without delay. 116 Emergency Care Suffocation or Asphyxiation Get the victim out into the air at once. Be sure he has a clear airway. Remove debris from the mouth and throat and begin mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing, as outlined on the following page. Carbon monoxide poisoning is a very serious problem in large cities today, arising from exhaust fumes from cars, buses, and other vehicles. A similar kind of poisoning may arise from unburned illuminating gas and also from a leak in the exhaust system of a car. Carbon monoxide is always present in smoke. Usually the victim complains of headache, weakness, dizziness, nausea, and dimness of vision. Unless this is quickly relieved, the victim may collapse and die. Treatment, if the victim is unconscious, start mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing at once, following the suggestions outlined on page 117. If possible, give oxygen, or a mixture of oxygen and carbon dioxide if available. If the heart has stopped, press firmly about 60 times a minute over the middle of the breastbone. Use the heel off the hand and press sharply toward the backbone, lifting the hand off the chest after each quick pressure. This may help to get the heart going again. Meanwhile, have someone call a doctor at once. Prevention, have all chimneys and flues inspected at least once each year. Cooking utensils should be kept clean on the outside. Suffocation 117. As well as inside. Stoves and ovens should be kept free from grease and sooty deposits. Remember, most fire fatalities are caused by carbon monoxide, not by burns. Therefore, get the patient out in the fresh air at once, and avoid inhaling the smoke from a burning building or any other fire. Never start a car in a closed garage. Be sure the doors are open to allow plenty of fresh air. Drowning If the victim is still in the water, try to draw him ashore with a rope or stick. Use a boat, if one is handy. Once on shore, follow these directions. 1. Roll the victim on his stomach. Remove water and debris from his mouth as quickly as possible. 2. Pull the tongue forward, grasping it between the thumb and forefinger. Use a dry cloth to hold the tongue, if necessary. 3. Mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing. If the victim is not breathing, lay him on his back, bringing the chin forward and up. Hold the nose firmly and breathe gently into his mouth about 15 or 20 times a minute. This will inflate the lungs and help restore the circulation. If preferred, use some type of tube, firmly holding the victim's lips around the tube while inflating the lungs. 4. Heart Massage If the heart has stopped beating, continue mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing while someone else gives cardiac. 118. Emergency Care Massage by pressing firmly with the heel of the hand over the middle of the basket bone about 60 times a minute. Be sure to lift the hand off after each pressure. 5. Call an ambulance and transfer to the nearest hospital, placing the victim under good medical management. 6. Keep him warm. Frostbite. Many people do not tolerate cold very well, particularly during their later years. Intense cold may produce a condition known as frostbite, in which small crystals of ice tend to form within the tissues, often completely destroying the cells. Chillblains are a milder form of freezing, in which there is itching and burning in the skin following exposure to cold. The flesh feels numb and cold, and there is considerable pain the hands and feet. Treatment, avoid rubbing the injured part, for this only increases the damage. Bring the victim indoors. Cover the frozen part with a warm, dry, woolen cloth, and give him something warm to drink. Gradually warm the frozen part with lukewarm water to prevent further injury. If no warm shelter is available, cover the frozen area with a warm bare hand and add several layers of woolen clothing. Frostbite can usually be prevented by wearing proper clothing, such as gloves or mittens wherever cold is likely to be intense. One should avoid smoking, because tobacco constricts the blood vessels of the skin and increases the chances of frostbite. Keep the feet dry 
and wear warm dry socks. All exposed areas, such as the face, should be protected by some suitable oil to help preserve the normal heat of the skin. Emergency splints. Accidents usually happen in the most unlikely places. A serious fracture may occur, requiring specially careful handling. Here are a few suggestions for applying emergency splints to support a broken bone. Wrap about 30 layers of newspaper around the injured arm or leg, and tie firmly in place. This will prevent further injury until more suitable splints can be applied. If a newspaper or magazine is not available, wrap a pillow or coat around the injured part. Tie. Splints 119. Firmly in place, using rope, string, a necktie, stocking, or whatever is available. Any narrow board or even a walking stick can be used to support a fractured extremity. But be careful not to bind the extremity too tightly, for this may cut